What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Today we are continuing the story of our faith with the linchpin, the doctrine of justification. <laughs> That's right, we are on chapter four of our faith, the story of our faith, determining that every nuance of our faith is a doctrine worth dying for. And I'm really excited for today's because the doctrine of justification is the doctrine upon which the church either stands or falls, is this doctrine of justification. So, uh, if you haven't been following along with these, definitely start out with episode one. We'll pop it up there. You can go to episode one. We're talking about uh, how there is a God, how there is evil in the world, how God sent his son into the world to redeem the world. And now we're talking about justification. And if you're a big fan of this kind of stuff, if you want more theology, you want to study your Christian faith in depth, I'm doing more on this channel than just going through the Augsburg Confession. I do so much more, so be sure to like your favorite video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload. And also, you can check me out on Facebook now. You can send me private messages that way. I'm sharing daily prayers, little funny memes, all sorts of crazy stuff, trying to grow my reach and have a bunch more fun with this channel and invite you to come along that journey with me. So definitely find me on Facebook as well. So we are on the doctrine of justification. We've gone over the fact that there is a God, that there is evil in the world, that God has answered that problem of evil by sending his son. But what did his son accomplish for us? He justified us. And this is a beautiful, beautiful doctrine. One that when the Augsburg Confession was first presented, Rome rejected. And sadly, one that mainline American evangelicalism likewise rejects. But the doctrine of justification is the linchpin of the whole of our Christian faith. So we're going to take some time to go through it. So let's turn to the old school like we always do, and then we'll go new school. Our churches teach that people cannot be justified before God by their own strength, merits, or works. People are freely justified for Christ's sake through faith when they believe that they are received into favor and that their sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. By his death, Christ made satisfaction for our sins. God counts this faith for righteousness in his sight. And to, to further expand upon that, we are also going to turn to the word of God. So we're going to go to the book of Romans, chapter 3, starting at verse 21. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be the just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since God is one who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. And in uh, chapter 4, it goes on a bit more. But so, Romans, But I don't know how you can read the book of Romans and not walk away a Lutheran. <laughs> we have been justified by grace through faith apart from works of the law. Now, when this was presented uh, in, in the 1500s at the, the, the Council of Augsburg, when the, the emperor was trying to get the princes to unite with him to fight the Turk, and he just said, oh, just bow the knee to the Pope and then help me fight the Turk. And we're like, 
we'll help you fight the Turk, but we're not bowing the knee to the Pope. The doctrine of justification that we, what is justification? We have been justified. What does that mean? That means that we have been declared righteous. Remember, uh, in a previous episode, I was mocking Joyce Meyer a little bit where she says, I'm not poor, I'm not miserable, I'm not a sinner, that's what I was, and if I still am, then Jesus died in vain. Uh, And then she's like, the Bible says that I'm righteous, and I can't be righteous and a sinner at the same time. Well, in the previous episode, uh, uh, story two, chapter two of the story of our faith, we talked about concupiscence, and we talked about our inborn desire to sin. We are by nature sinful and unclean in that we, we're we not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. So what are we by nature? We are sinners. What are we by the declaration of God? We are righteous. Simul justus et peccator in Latin. At the same time, sinner and saint. Or at the same time, saint and sinner, whichever the order be. And this is really good news. And this is where Rome and evangelicals stray from the biblical doctrine. Justification is a declaration over us from God. You are redeemed. You are righteous. Why? Not because of any works, worthiness, or merit in me, but because of the perfect obedience of Christ living the law absolutely perfectly, obeying and meeting the demand of his heavenly Father for perfect perfect obedience to the law and his propitiatory death on the cross, his blood sacrifice, his all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross for us and in our place, enduring the wrath of God for our not keeping the law. Why are we justified? Why are we declared righteous in God's sight even though we have done nothing to earn it? Because Jesus did it all. Tetelestai, it says in the Greek, it is finished. It is accomplished. The debt has been paid. And in Roman Catholicism, the debt isn't quite paid, is it? Because you still have to do good works. God gets you there, but you got to go the rest of the way. And in mainline American Protestantism, it's not truly finished, is it? Because you have to do something. You have to invite Jesus into your heart. You have to say the sinner's prayer. You have to do all of this stuff. That's not the gospel. That is not the doctrine of justification. That is not what the Bible says. Why is it that when we're talking about someone on social media trying to justify themselves to us, we know what the word justify means. But when we get to theological terms and we say, hey, look at what Romans says, we are justified. We are declared righteous by God himself because of what Jesus did. Gosh, what good news. All of a sudden, we don't know what justified means. Oh, you have to ask Jesus into your heart. Show me that in the Bible. That is the $100 challenge. Show me in the Bible where it says you have to pray the sinner's prayer and ask Jesus into your heart. No, gospel means good news. And the good news for you and for me is that there is a God. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That we are born uh, sinful and unclean, and we have concupiscence, an inborn desire to sin, which makes us sinners. God has answered the problem of sin by sending his son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our savior. And we are not saved by anything that we can do because we can't do it, but we are justified. We are declared righteous. Why? Because Jesus did it all. And he did it for you. This is good news. How do we know all this? How do we know that there's a God who's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? How do we know that there's a problem of sin? How do we know that God sent his only begotten Son into our flesh, who was crucified, died, buried, descended into hell, rose again on the third day? How do we know that we are justified? Because God, in his infinite mercy and wisdom, has ordained the office of the holy ministry. Won't you join me next week for chapter 5, the story of our faith, the office of the ministry. Until next time, 
May God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Your Highness, we have drawn up a confession of our faith, which I believe you will find blameless 